In this video, we're going to talk about a little bit more complicated compounds. Um, let's take one like this. If you had this compound, uh, what would it be called? Well, that's sodium, and that is nitride. And many times, students will say, oh, sodium nitrate. We've heard of things like nitrate and sulfate and carbonate. And we've heard those, and we try to throw those at it. Here's the deal. If it is a single element, it is just I. But I want to talk about those things, nitrate, sulfate, those kinds of things. Those are what are called polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions. They're not in, they can be hard for you, so you've got to be very careful. Now, I'm going to show you how the star chart does it, okay, for the EOC. Polyatomic ions, it prints these out for you. You zoom in just a little bit, and you can see the formulas. All right, that's good. And they're right here on the left-hand side. Acetate, ammonium, carbonate, chlorate, nitrate, nitrate, sulfate, sulfite. Okay? If you look at their formulas, all, they're not single elements. They are more than one element together. They are a group that has a charge. For example... This one right here, phosphate, is PO4, negative 3. Now, notice they wrote 3 negative. means same thing. PO4, negative 3. Let me zoom back out a little bit. PO4, negative 3. It is a group that has that charge. Rather than just being a single with a charge, it's a group with a charge. So let's play with those a little bit, and let's see how these things work. They're called polyatomic ions. And so we're going to use these a little bit, and here's how it works. The one we just had was this, and it was called sodium nitride. Well, let's look at the one that looks so close to that, which is going to be nitrate. So you still have sodium, which is plus one. That's easy. That comes right off the chart. Oops, wrong chart. It comes right off the chart right here. Sodium is a plus one. Okay? Now let's use this thing called nitrate. It's right here on this chart, NO3, negative one. The rules are still the same. These have to equal zero. They do. So the formula, you erase those. They cancel out. NaNO3 called sodium nitrate. Now look at these two. They don't look the same. Anytime you have eight or ite, it's going to be a dead giveaway that it's a group with a charge, and it's going to come from the back of this chart that you're going to use on the test. Okay? So it's a group with a charge. That's all there is to it. You still have to check your charges. So what happens if you had Ca with NO3? Watch very carefully. Ca is a plus 2 off the chart. Nitrate's a minus 1. They don't equal 0, so you switch them. The 2 goes out here, so it becomes Ca1, NO3, 2. Now, do I mean NO32? No. Well, when you're in math class and you want to multiply a group by something, like multiply by 2, you put it in parentheses. And we do the same thing in chemistry. When you have a group and you add a number, it's the only time you do it, you have parentheses called calcium nitrate. Notice the name does not tell me there's an extra number in it. It doesn't. Let's try another one real quick. What if you had one like this, Ca plus 2, and you had something like SO4 minus 2? And again, every one I'm using comes right off this chart. They equal zero. So the real formula is CaSO4 called calcium. Look up the name. Sulfate. Eight. Eight tells me that it is uh, one of those on the group. Now, there's also one of these on the chart. Write this one down. Ooh, it just changed from a four to a three. When I switch them, it becomes CaSO3. And if you look on that chart, this is called sulfite. The difference between eights and ites is typically the number of oxygens. So you want to use that chart every time to help you. Now, for some classes, they make our teacher might make us memorize them to make our life easier so that we know them immediately. And the differences between the eights and the ites is the number of oxygens. Sulfate, sulfite. Okay, so they're close, but they're not the same thing. Okay, one more. What happens if I had one like this? NH4 and I put it with SO4. Well, if I look them up on that star chart, 
I get these numbers. That's a group and that's a group. Do they equal zero? Nope. So I switch. That goes there. That goes there. So I get NH42. Oh, need parentheses. SO4 has a one and I don't write the one called ammonium sulfate. Again, does not tell me the numbers inside. All I did was switch them. All I did was switch them. Parentheses because I had a group and I added a number. Okay, I'm going to show you one more and this is the tricky one. What if you had these two? Plus two right off the chart. OH on the star chart is a minus one called hydroxide. Notice it doesn't have any numbers. When you switch them, you get BAOH2. Tricky part is this. Do I add parentheses? Well, is this a group? Yes, it is. I added an extra number. Does the 2 just go on the H? No, it's supposed to be on the whole group. Remember, we taught it like this a while ago. If I had two of these, that would equal, so I need two of that group. That's when I need parentheses. So anytime I have a polyatomic ion, which is one of these off that chart, off that star chart, anytime I have one of these and I add an extra number by switching, it always has parentheses. Called barium hydroxide. In the next video, you're going to try a couple on your own.